I do apologize, family, for the technical difficulties on the connection, but that is all right. We are going to get this interview back going. Are we back? We are back. I'm not I don't sure. know what happened. I'm not sure what even happened. Can you see me? I can see you. Okay. I can see you, yes. Peace, everyone that's joining back with us. I do apologize for the mishap on the camera aspect, but we are going to get everything back going. And hello to everybody that's joining the live again with us. See, everyone's coming right back on. I'll send some more out too. You want me to send some send send it out again? Yes, you can send you can send okay. it to everybody. I don't know if it's my phone or what, but it's tripping. I did not use tripping like I'm 80. <laughs> Let's see. We can get it to get it going again. <laughs> We're gonna get this thing going again. Please don't do me like that, Jesus. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Hello, hello to everyone that's joining in with us. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the questions over just so we can, you know, reiterate what was previously stated. Okay. So, hello to everyone that's joining us on Hill Holidays. Sugar Ari, Alicia checking in with Sound on the Hill Sound everywhere today. I have with me Kim Run Dangerfield, celebrity chef and Bulldog alumnus. Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm here. I promise it's not me. I know it's not me. <laughs> I'm How not sure doing? what's I'm going on to today. You must be too popping. No, it's okay. We're here. <laughs> We're here. We're here. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. Um, okay. How does it feel to be back working and giving back to your HBCU? Okay, so, you know, kind of as I um, I started, be I stated before, it's a bit overwhelming and it's a bit underwhelming, especially working in a capacity uh, that I have never worked before, um, like business and residential dining. You know, most of my repertoire, it, it focuses really honestly in private dining, very small engagements. I rarely, you know, cater um, anything larger than like, you know, 25. So, okay. you know, being in a position to where we're opening up a brand new state of the art, you know, dining hall on campus is a bit overwhelming. Um, and a challenge that, you know, I'm excited to take. Um, I love Alabama a and I love all of its constituents, all of the alumnus, students, faculty and staff. You know, I literally am the living, breathing, like, example of it's in my blood <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely um, overwhelming and challenging however it's been a little bit underwhelming for me as well you know transitioning from a city like Atlanta where you know everything is black literally I mean that's it period right. everything is black you know black success black everywhere everything is black you know and then to transition to a city where I completely forgot what the dynamics of the city was outside of being a student it's been a little bit underwhelming, but I'm, I'm excited to be a part of the current culture here in Atlanta. Hey, Takia. Hey, Ev. What's up, Amber? <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. It, it's definitely it's definitely a move. It was a move for me. Absolutely. We are so glad to have you back. So what is your biggest memory from a ms campus? So my biggest memory would definitely have to be, you know, starting cooking with Cam, you know, selling food from Normal Hills, you know, having the entire community of A&M, the entire community of um, Huntsville, you know, honestly supporting just a young entrepreneur, you know, trying to make an honest living for myself. 
So, you know, that memory will forever live with me and it'll forever be, you know, embedded in a ms history because not only did I make history for myself, I kind of, you know, really made history for the school. So that's really honestly a memory that I probably won't ever be able to forget. Um, being president of War Modeling Troop is definitely one of the brightest memories that I had, you know, being a part Got of it. a family, like somebody said, still have my cooking with Cam button, being a part <laughs> of a family dynamic like War Modeling Troop um, Incorporated was definitely something that gave me tools to be able to speak, um, gave me tools to be able to lead um, my peers, to be a, a peer leader. Um, and it's just memories I'll never be able to forget. I mean, it's stuff that I can't necessarily speak about on live. But baby, you know, it's definitely some memories that I'll never be able Absolutely. to Absolutely. The hill, the hill. <laughs> so, so what started your passion for food and for cooking? Well, to be honest, I've always loved food. You know, I was a fat ass kid. So for me, <laughs> my childhood was school, eat, what are we going to eat? What's for lunch? What's for breakfast? What's for dinner? So I have always really, really honestly enjoyed food. Um, but my journey as far as taking food seriously as a career really honestly started at a &M when my mom passed and I really just needed some money. <laughs> and it was just like, I don't really have any other, t I can't, you know, really make money off award. I can't dance. So I can't go dance on the corner. I'm not about to sell water bottles like they do in the city or sell fruities. Like all I really knew how to do was have an innate ability to hustle being from Chicago and also being able to cook. So, you know, I would cook for the different organizations and my friends and they like, nigga, you, I don't know if I can say these words, but I have a potty mouth. But they're like, nigga, you need to be selling this food. You're always cooking food. People say how good your food is. Why not sell it and try to make money for yourself so, you know, you don't have to be in a position to where you're, you don't have anything or, or your lifestyle is inadequate because you don't have. So I just began to see if I could do it. I was afraid, you know, I was very apprehensive because, you know, me back in the day, I was real bougie. And I'm like, I'm not going to be walking around and people ask me, am I selling plates? So, you know, I just thought that was real ghetto. Like, it's not the <laughs> church. It's not no fundraiser. We're not doing no fish fries. So I didn't really want to do it. Um, but after I did it, somebody said, what's in the mug? <laughs> after I did it the first time and I realized that people were very receptive and they liked my taste palette or as far as how I you know, wanted to just do simple flavors of food. I was like, okay, maybe this will be my way that I can reach multiple people opposed to, you know, reaching them the ways that I had been on the hill. Okay. So that's really just kind of how I got my start. It really started off just me really honestly kicking it in normal hills. I mean, we was playing spades. We had drinks. You know, we was doing our other recreational things that we wanted to do. And it just really honestly turned to be a nonstop party. Like Melt Monday was literally a party every Monday. You know, at first it started off with just me and Debo and my friend Alexis. And then it got out of hand where I really honestly needed a team. So then that's why I was like, shit, you know, I had my friends around me. I'm like, y'all want to be the Melt team? I mean, y'all, I'm already asking y'all to drop <laughs> this, put this in the bag. Can you answer the phone? So then I had Dee Dee, Munch, Bebe, and at the crib and Darius. <laughs> and they literally became like, my help. And it was like, if it w really honestly wasn't for them, it was no way that I would have been able to take, you know, cooking with Cam to the places that, that it was. Cause I mean, it was a real job. Like literally like them niggas was sweating, right. like working a real job. Like, <laughs> so that's kind of, that's really how it got started. Okay. So now we're going to get into the celebrity chef cam portion. Okay. How, how was it cooking for your first celebrity client? So my first celebrity client, I cooked for him while I was still a student at a &M, still doing, you know, the Mail Cafe. At that point, we had moved down uh, South Parkway, um, but it was Ricky Smiley. And okay. it was an absolute horror. I mean, I don't even know <laughs> what else to say. You know, me, I'm walking in. I know my food is going to be good. And the food still turned out to be good. They still love the food, but not recognizing that celebrities are regular people but they expect a certain level of excellence that I had not yet encountered from anyone. You know, I had not yet had people send me demands or be demanding about what they want um, or right. what they wanted. You know, everything else had been people text me, they call me, they want food, they wait an hour, they wait two hours, they get their food when they get it and they fine with it. But it was a completely different game um, because it was, I mean, it was just really honestly a completely different game. Um, it was definitely scary. Um, I got a lot of learning lessons from that. Um, Ricky Smiley does not play. 
He's no one to play <laughs> with, um, to be honest. He was very ruthless. <laughs> wow. So my first experience, honestly, with everything that I needed it to be, because mm -hmm. it molded me to be as excellent as I am or to look for a level of ex excellency in the way that I do now. You know, if I didn't have that the first time I ever cooked for a celebrity, I'm not sure if I would even have the level of excellency that I, I strive for in my work. Okay. That's that's very, I, because you know Ricky Smiley, he's all laughs and jokes, but like yeah, well that's and, that's what y'all think. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, you know, cooking for him, actually preparing his food, and trying to you know give him that professional experience, that experience with just your food in general. I know that was pretty like, and it was a professional <laughs> experience that I had never had before. You know, I never, I didn't know what a celebrity writer was. I didn't know what it meant to cook food for the celebrity. And then we also had to cook food for the comics that was on his comedy tour. So, you know, to make sure okay. that these people are pleased as well as making sure that the thousand things that he has on his list are set the exact way that he <laughs> wanted them. You know, it was definitely um, an experience that I had never had before. What's up, bro? Thank you for joining in. So my first experience with the celebrity was definitely the growing pains that I needed to be able to be in the position that I am in today. Okay, so what advice would you give to other upcoming self-taught chefs? I would honestly, it, it's three things that I always tell people, especially if you're going to go into the culinary business and you're not a technical chef um, who has a culinary degree or someone who, you know, went to a culinary institute. It's three things that I always tell people. One is you have to have authenticity. And right. that is very important because everybody cooks. When you're hungry, even if you're not the, a chef or the best chef in the world, you go to the kitchen and you cook. So being a cook or having the ability to be able to cook is nothing special. You know, I tell people right. all the time, me being a chef, and it's no offense to the other chefs in the world who create this lane to be something of a specialty. It's nothing special. We've had to cook and people have had to cook our entire you know, existence in order for us to you know, have sustenance and eat. But what sets you apart and what, what puts you in the lane where where I get to my next point um, of being profitable is being, you know, having authenticity and having something that only you can have. You know, when people, they think of me, they think of a certain quality of food. They think of a certain look of food. You know, they expect for colors, dynamic personality. They expect an experience. They don't just expect for me to come and cook. But those are all things that are authentic to me outside of me cooking. Absolutely. No matter if I'm cooking or not, it's going to be it together. It's going to be colors. It's going to be personality. It's going to be something that I would want opposed to me just trying to give you what you want. No, I only know how to please myself. And I know if it's pleasing to me, I would just hope that, you know, it can be pleasing to you. Um, and then the second thing that I have is profit profitability. Um, it's very important for if you're going into this industry, you can really go broke. You can really p find yourself wow. in a situation where you can put everything into this cooking business, try to get a food truck, own a restaurant, you know, have a catering company, do meal preps, and you can find yourself in a situation where you're spending more money than you're actually getting. So right. I always tell people when you want to come into this business, talk to someone who knows about the business side if you don't have business sense. Because just being a cook and just being a chef and loving food is not enough. We all love food. We all love to eat, you know? We all think our grandma got the best macaroni, our gram <laughs> grandpa got the best dressing, or somebody can do the best jerk chicken. So having food or good food is, is not the, the main goal when you want to be an entrepreneur in the business. You have to make sure that what you are doing, it has a level of profitability, or it'll just simply be a hobby. Wow. Um, and my last thing that I always tell people is be willing to take risks. Be willing. You have to be willing to take risks. You know, anybody that knows my personal story of me trying to create this brand to what it is today, what it will be in the future and what it was, know that I took risk that I don't know anybody else would take. You know, I put myself on the line where I put my all into what I wanted cooking with Cam to be, that it got me in positions to where I was living life very irresponsibly. You know, I was in situations where I wasn't handling business the way I, I, I knew how to because I wasn't thinking about profitability. I was just thinking that I have so much money, let's spend it. But right. there's no profit. You know, I was in positions to where I couldn't pay my rent. I was in positions to where I couldn't even pay my car note, you know? 
and I'm making thousands of dollars, but I was never thinking about what is the profitability of this business. And profitability is more than just making money. How am I profiting from it? And I wasn't. I never thought about that. So I found myself in situations where I lost my apartment. I've been evicted before. I've lost my car. I've had repossessions before. And I'm not afraid to share that with people because as an entrepreneur, you have to understand and you have to be prepared that every day is different. And every day can be a day where one day everything could be gone. One day people may not support you. One day you may be in a position to where you lose everything. And if you're not willing to take a risk to lose everything, to gain just one thing that you want, then being an entrepreneur is not the business for you. Well said. I can definitely relate to that. You know, being an entrepreneur myself, I definitely can relate to that statement. All day. It's, it's literally struggles. And for me... I am thankful that I had those barriers early on. Um, and I'm glad that those barriers happened in a strategic way that God presented in the way that he wanted my life to go because I knew that one day that I would have to be a vessel and I would have to be a beacon for so many other people who want to go down a path of working for themselves. Um, and it's, it's definitely something very interesting. And another thing that I will definitely add to that too is if you want to be an entrepreneur, have a plan that crutches you people will tell you quit your job and chase your dreams i tell people that's fucking crazy excuse my language i'm not sure we can curse on this platform but i curse all the time it's crazy it really is i would never tell somebody to quit their job and and just chase their dreams because what do you have fueling your lifestyle what do you have fueling your necessities what do you have fueling your mental when you're putting everything into something that at this point is still just a dream so uh, something that a lot of people don't know about me is that when I moved to Atlanta and I finally graduated from A&M and I say finally, because I always say that to people because it took me six and a half years to get out of A&M. I came to A&M as a full presidential scholar, which means that I had to have been at within the top five of all of the students that came in A&M in the time that I did, came in as a full presidential scholar and it still took me six and a half years to graduate. Which means that, of course, I went through uphill battles. I lost my mom, started cooking with Cam. And girl, I was making money. I wasn't going to class. That's just what it was, you know. But when I finally graduated and I moved to Atlanta, I got a job offer, you know, working for a financial wow. technology company, one of the largest companies in the world. And I worked that job until I could not work that job anymore. You know, I was still on salary. You know, I was still traveling with my job. You know, I was promoted three different times in the period of time that I was there. But the money that I was making was helping me fuel my dream. Right. It was affording me to be able to do that. So I'm on salary. I'm still working 40 hours a week. When I was leaving to go do bookings, I was putting in PTO. When I had to do a segment on Sister Circle that was probably from 9 to 10 a.m., I was putting in PTO. Right. I was putting in vacation. I'm coughing that morning. I'm sick, but I know I'm going to, I'm going to do a TV <laughs> segment, you know? I use my career to fuel my the I use my career to fuel the life that I wanted to live. And the moment that God put me in a position that I did not have to work for anyone anymore, he held that that path. He created that path for me. So I didn't have to walk away from my job. My job didn't have to let me go. I was put in a position to where God said, this is the path that you're going to go down. And I'm going to make sure that no matter what happens, there will be uphill battles, but I'll take care of you. And I just took heed to that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So how was your master chef experience? How was it winning? So a lot of people always get that misconstrued. I didn't win master chef. Okay. I was on master chef twice. I was on master chef season nine and season 10. Um, but I was on food network uh, for a competition called cutthroat kitchen. And I did win that uh, competition, but okay. master chef did happen first. Um, and it was an exhilarating experience. Um, it was an experience that I needed, especially going into an industry that is a white man's industry. And that's just what it is. It is a white, middle-aged to older white male industry dominated by only white males. And the white women, they get the coinciding parts. There is no place for an African-American, very eloquent, educated, well-spoken gay man in culinary entertainment. There just isn't. That's why you haven't seen many before. You know, you've seen many of chefs. You've seen a lot of Black chefs, especially in the Atlanta market, but you don't see that many who have a consistent and a progressive career in culinary entertainment. So it taught me a lot. It taught me that I was actually right. more valuable to the industry than a competition. 
because in that competition, I could be used as a, a clause. I could be used as a puppet. They can put me on there and, and want me to say whatever they want me to say. They can put me on there to be honey girl this or miss ma'am this and what they, they think the idea of a black gay man in entertainment is. But it gave me an option to prove to them everything other than that. Right. I'm not getting on here and I'm not being something that I'm not. I'm not getting on here and I'm not acting the role that you want me to because this is what TV or what you think TV is. I'm going to get on here. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to get on here. I'm going to make you guys laugh. I'm going to make a lot of you guys feel very little because you're so surprised that a young black educated man that does not have a culinary degree is shitting on you. And that's exactly <laughs> what that experience was. So it really honestly taught me that you can have your own and you can be your own, but you have to figure out the way that you want to do it. And that's literally, honestly, what it taught me. Um, and it taught me a lot about the industry because it was on Fox. It was on a conservative network, um, a place where I'm usually not accepted, but you couldn't deny me based off of my talent. So it really put me in a place just to let me know that if this is what I want to do, like Tyler Perry said, I have to create the table for myself. Because right. this isn't the place where I'm going to find any type of success. This isn't the place that I'm going to find any type of self-gratification because the gratification that they want to give is not designed for me. It's designed for somebody who doesn't look like me. Not my skin color, not the brightness of my nose, not the thickness and the curliness of my hair. This network wasn't made for that. It was made for me to get on there, give a sob story, tell how I came from nothing, and now I'm here. No, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how great I am. Let's talk about Absolutely. how I'm shining talk about how I'm the only one here that needed no direction but they didn't want to talk about that so that's why I only made this episode one wow so okay so do you feel like there are levels to success like do you feel like all levels are written the same or do you feel like everyone should create their own it is a world where you have to create your own path there is no secret um, to success. There is no, no black book. There is no, really honestly, no, there isn't a blueprint because everybody's story is different. Everybody has different specialties. Everybody has different weaknesses. Everybody, you know, they receive information differently. So you really honestly have to find a level um, of congruency that works for you. So for me, one of my mentors early on told me, Cam, the only way that you will honestly be successful in an industry like this is if you rely on the best parts of you. Yeah. And what that means is don't worry about the bad parts of you. We all have those. Don't worry about what could go wrong. Everything could go wrong. But the difference between you is that I've never, when well, she was talking to me, so the difference between me and other people is that no matter what, the blockade is, no matter what the mountain is, no matter what the adversity is, there's never been anything in life that has ever been able to hold me down. And that's literally the best part about me is my perseverance. You could slap me literally in my face right now and I just look at you like, girl, I hope that that slap was the best slap that you had because it didn't affect me. It didn't hurt me. I'm fine. You know, there's never been anything in life that has ever been able to stop me. And that's the best part about me. If you ever ask anybody a question other than my food, you ask them, like, what is special about Cam? They'll probably tell you that nigga just don't stop. I love it. I love so, it. That's really beautiful. So to me, I guess there is, I just say there is no special way. There is no, no blueprint. It's really honestly, you know, relying on the best parts of you and finding what works for you. You know, what works for me and my business may not work for you. You're an entrepreneur as well. You know, you have a completely different path. And if I could take this time to say that I'm proud of you, I'm, I'm so proud of, of what you guys are doing. You know, it's very admirable. And, you know, you guys should be commended, you know, for what you're doing for the community. Um, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't put myself in your shoes and say, oh, I'm going to do what I did for Cooking with Cam and I want to be you. It wouldn't work that way. Right. It just wouldn't work that way. Well, we thank you so much for your transparency, of course, but thank you for the love and the support and just seeing you come from A&M and just being to, you know, like everyone walks around campus knowing each other and yeah. having classes together and to see you actually like in this position that you What's are up, now. Kelvin? Really beautiful. It's thank beautiful. you. I love it. And we adore it so much. If you guys have any questions, we're now going to yep. open up the Q&A segment. You can drop your questions below where the question mark is. 
by the comment section. Okay, and, and even, you know, if, if we just, you know, talk casually, you know, for if they're alumni, students, whoever, you know, everybody a part of the Sound on the Hill um, community, what I always like to tell people is don't allow people to hold you to who you were when they knew you before. Because right. we all should be granted the at least one opportunity, if not three opportunities, to grow. And not only to grow, but to grow and evolve. Because who I was, even when you first met me, who I was when your big Didi first met me, that's not the camera on who I am today. That's right. not the camera on who I was six months ago. That's not the camera on who I was even a year ago. Because I allow myself opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to grow. I allow myself opportunity after opportunity to learn, to be impressionable at all times. I'm not a know-it-all. I don't care to know it all. I want to learn more. I want to learn it all. That's what I want to do. And, you know, if we could be transparent, this last year of my life has probably been the most financially successful, probably the most you know, industry successful, you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of TV, you know, I've booked paid partnerships with, with major brands. I've cooked for some of the top celebrities, you know, I traveled throughout the entire pandemic because I w it was a need for my craft. But this has been personally the most chaotic and traumatic year that I've ever had, you know, right. and most of the times I live a public life, but I never speak about you know, what actually happens in my personal life. But in this moment, I'm comfortable enough to say that I struggled through the most traumatic um, personal year of my life, even more traumatic than when my mom passed. And what it proved to me is that what God has for you is for you. And if you can, you can overcome a mohill, you can overcome a small bump in the road, then you can overcome any mountain. And, you know, that's something that I really have been sharing with people this last year is that it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. I've had people say many of things about me. You know, I've had people call me on my name. People lie on me. People try to manipulate me. People have done it all. I mean, done, done it all, literally. <laughs> and what have I done? I have smiled. And, pushed and I have worked. Because I don't have to speak for Cam. Cam works speaks for itself. And that's just what it is. I stay true and authentic to myself. I make sure that everything I do is profitable and you know that it's profitable because I can't fake the funk in what I do. I just can't. Absolutely. And I'm going to take every risk, every single risk that I possibly can, even if that means sacrificing everything that I have to gain just one more thing, I will do that. Okay, we have a question that just came okay. in. What is next for Cooking with Cam? And I'm proud of you, by the way, bro. Thank you, Dan Tautu. Okay, so... What's next for Cooking with Cam? Currently, right now, um, you know, I've accepted the position to open the brand new dining hall um, on Annam's campus. Some people do know it's on my page. I have hidden it because I don't want everybody to know right now, but I wanted to do a sneak peek. But I am opening up a restaurant in Huntsville. I'm opening up the first uh, brunch, cultural brunch style restaurant in Huntsville called Brunch at Cam's. Um, I've broken ground, you know, on this restaurant about eight weeks ago. It is the state-of-the-art restaurant. There will be no other restaurant, especially a Black-owned restaurant like this in town. It will be the likes of everything that you can get from Miami to Atlanta to California, even to the Midwest of Chicago. Um, oh. The who's who will be there. Um, I am also will be a part of a TV show. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now that I can speak very, very, very vaguely about. But just mm -hmm. know that there's more TV. Um, I am going into my first official investment um, and I'm helping my school get into the 21st century when it comes to dining and what the kids want to eat. So, you know, unlimited mimosas, hookah, you know, um, infused cappuccinos, espresso, Woo! everything that you can imagine, you know, chicken and waffles, <laughs> shrimp and grits, steak and eggs, lamb chopping eggs, you know, DJ, you know, live music. I mean, you can Plant take your ass at my restaurant if you want to. It's going to be a, options. Who? Plant-based options. Plant-based options, vegan options, and vegetarian options. They, we got we got you covered, you know. I have go. to have my award-winning, you know, avocado toast on the menu. You know, that can be modified in many of different ways. But I'm very excited about my future because one thing that I have proven to myself and I have proven to a lot of other people is that when you do something that you love and you do something that you're truly passionate about, you can live out the rewards immediately. 
I don't have to work at a job for 30 years and wait to retire to begin to live my best life and the life that I've wanted to live. And to be honest, the last four and a half years of my life, I have lived my best life every day, even as I have struggled, even as I even, even as I have went through traumatic situations, even as I have went through, you know, just so many of things, I have still lived my best life. You know, I have been able to travel the world, not just travel the states, I've traveled the world. I've been able to be in situations that people only dream of, and I haven't had to do anything but just honestly, authentically be myself. You know, be, be pure, be kind to people, you know, give myself the chance to grow because who I was back in the day, I was an asshole. I was arrogant, you know, I was, I was unreceptive to cr criticism, um, I thought that I knew it all and I realized that that was not the person who I wanted to be. I was looking at an image of people who I thought were in power and that's how they acted. And I realized that that's who they were. But if I stayed true to myself and who I was, then I could have my, my flowers myself. I don't have to worry about somebody bringing me my flowers. Girl, I can go and pick my own bouquet. Absolutely. Okay, we got some. Hey, Kayla. Okay, so how have you adjusted to all of the exposure with the industry, people, and success? That's a great question. Mm. That's a good question. Whew. Okay, so <laughs> for me, I, I have always been a ball of energy. Um, I have always been, and I, I don't think the center of attention is, the, is the, the right phrase, but when I say the center of attention, people understand what I mean. I've always been in the mix with a lot of people. But right. the difference between me and, you know, being in the industry and being with people of success, I grew up in a house. I have 10 siblings. Okay. I'm the youngest <laughs> of my 10 siblings. So I've always been surrounded around a lot of people. I've always been surrounded around loving people, caring people, people who want to see you win. And it's no different than people in the industry. And I think that's where people make the mistake. They go into the industry and they feel like they have to treat these people like they're gods. They feel like they have to treat these people like they're so much better than them because they have more money. But right. once you get in the industry and you get around people of success, you realize that money is actually the least important thing to people who have money. And that's what has helped me navigate through the industry is realizing, you know, the first time somebody told me, they said, you know, as much money as I have, I still couldn't even pay to be you. And I was like, you know, I was asking my friend, what did that mean? And she was just like, you don't even realize that the person that you are, the value of who you are and how you make people feel when you're around them, you can't even buy that with money. And that's why you're going to be successful. And that was very early on. That was early on when I first moved to Atlanta. And it was something that I stuck with. And I realized that, honestly, I keep saying it over and over again. If I remain authentic, I keep the authenticity of who I am to the highest level, then I cannot walk into any room and be denied. Absolutely. Because who I am is love. You know, who I am is, is kindness. Who I am is giving. Who I am is a fool. I make, you know, I make you laugh. Even when you're going through your roughest days, no matter what it is, I find a way that we don't even focus on that, you know? And that's just naturally who I am. So when I have celebrity friends, you can ask any of my friends. Michaela's in there right now. All of my celebrity clients are like family. After the first right. time I, I, I have any of my clients, I don't have any client that would not call me back right now. I don't have any client that would not invite me over for dinner, even if I'm not cooking. I've had celebrity clients ask me to babysit their kids. Like, girl, first of all, I'm not a babysitter. <laughs> I know your kids like my food, but I'm not babysitting your kids. These you can kids babysit Junior, though. Baby, these, these kids these with money are crazy, and I'm not babysitting your children. But <laughs> me being authentically myself, I don't walk into rooms and be denied. And that's a skill. You know, you have to learn that. Um, and it's, it's just really interesting that people ask that question because I've been getting that question a lot since I've come back to um, Alabama. And it, it's really interesting because people in the industry are really just regular people. They are people yeah. who have the same wants and needs that we have. They just so happen to have a lot more money. Um, and even to be transparent with the question about people in the industry, I've met a lot of people that had a lot of money and wish that they could just have happiness. So if, if, right. the, if you understand what that means, like I've, I've met a lot of people with a lot of money, more money than I've ever had, more money than I probably could imagine having. And sometimes they ask me, how do you smile so much? Right. How did you just work 12 hours and come in here and still give me full quality with a smile and make me laugh and make me feel comfortable? How do you have that? Because that's what I desire. But it's, it's something that God gave me, you know? You're rich in spirit. Period. 
Absolutely. The glow, the everything. So Thank you, baby. Definitely. You're glowing, too. Thank you. I have to send you my business page so you can Please. try skincare products. I would, you know, I would love to support with, without a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely. Keep dropping in questions, you guys. We are in Q&A at this moment. But, oh, I guess I can put in a shameless plug right now. So I am currently recording right now because all of my stuff is actually still in Atlanta. I haven't even moved all the way yet. But oh. I am currently <laughs> right now at the content room downtown um, Huntsville. The content room is owned by uh, my sister and brother, L'Oreal and Dante Pride. Okay. Um, it is a place where artists, you know, podcasters, um, hosts of, of shows, you know, if you want to come and do a photo shoot, you know, they have full spectrum of, of different content rooms where you can come and record your content, where they have professional lighting, you know, they have tripods, they have everything that you would possibly need. Like me, you know, my apartment mm -hmm. is empty, it's nothing in there. So it's like, I can't do an interview without the right light. So, I, you know, <laughs> she invited me to come here. So you guys are looking Beautiful. for, you know, somewhere to, you know, do content. I would say partner with, you know, L'Oreal and Dante Price. She's an alumnus of A&M. You know, she's an entrepreneur, you know, in Huntsville, Black-owned business as well. Beautiful. Shout out to L'Oreal and Dante. I would definitely be paying that room a visit. Period. <laughs> Let's see what comes. I'm very excited for that restaurant. No, baby, the restaurant. Because I miss it's, the brunches back home. I really do. And when I tell you it's about to be exquisite, I mean, and, it, I, and I'm not even saying that because it's my spot. I'm saying that because I know the type of work ethic that me and my partners are putting into this spot. And for me to be a 28-year-old business owner, and not just a small business, you know, this isn't just going to be... What's up, Debo? We, I, I gave you your shout out earlier when we were talking about, you know, the beginning of the Mail Cafe and how I could be nowhere if it wasn't, especially that first day, if it wasn't for you and Alexis, you know, really holding down the fort. Um, Debo was the first, you know, customer service manager. Um, but awesome. What was I just saying? You were talking about the exquisite experience. Oh, yeah. The restaurant. Have at this restaurant. Um, <laughs> oh, baby. It's going to be fine. I mean, everything you could imagine. I mean, my menu, you know, the build out, the aesthetic. Um, the culture that it's bringing to a place like Huntsville, especially with me being, you know, 28 years old, and I've lived a public, uh, a pretty public life. Hey, hey, Dr. Briggs, I lived a pretty public life, especially since I was at AM and I graduated from AM. And for people to know my story, to know that I struggle with the same things that you guys have. I've been evicted before. I've had a repossession before. I've been broke before. You know, I've done drugs just like the rest of you guys have. I almost failed out of college and still, you know, fought my way through it and to still be in my 20s, to still literally be in my 20s and for people to watch that e me evolve almost like a, a caterpillar into a butterfly it's so important that i open up my first restaurant in a place like huntsville because it's a full circle moment you know the same city where i was selling place out of normal hills and i got put out of normal hills i'm now staying in normal hills free and accepting a position administrator position at a m to revive the the entire dining services for the school right i mean the same apartment complex that put me out for selling food i have to say it again i am now staying there for free as i am reviving the entire dining services program for my alma mater that's a full circuit full circle moment the same city that supported me when i was just trying to sell food to make sure i didn't have to drop out of school so i had money to buy tissue to wipe my ass now even still in my 20s i'm opening up a full-fledged honestly probably the nicest restaurant that will be in huntsville and that's just what it is, you know. So excited. This is no hole in the wall. There will be no holes in the wall. I mean, unless somebody torque one in, they're going to have to patch it up. But <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, this is no hole in the wall. This is and this is a project like no one has like we have not seen this in the in the restaurant or the culinary industry in Huntsville. I'll say that. I'm ex I'm waiting. I'm excited. I'm excited. So just be on the lookout. I mean, you'll see the billboards. You know, you'll see. Absolutely. You'll see the, the advertisement. You know me. I'm going to do it up. I'm going to go all the way. We'll definitely be pr promoting that on the page, of course. So we can get Congrats everybody Cam, out. Congrats, Cam, on all your upcoming endeavors. My friend and I really enjoy watching on Sister Circle. Thank you. Yes, praise God. So yes, I'm my proud mom. of you too, big sister. It's all God. Because <laughs> it ain't me. Anybody that know me, I'm still a rat. I am. Still a rat. <laughs> I'm still the same Cam, but, but praise be to God for the favor, because it's all it is. It's literally favor. It's literally, literally favor. 
We appreciate you so much. Of course, baby. At Sound on the Hill. And we just thank you so much for joining our Hill Holiday Series. So if there's this no was such a cute <laughs> interview. You know, it's really crazy <laughs> because I have done a few other interviews. And it's like everybody, you know, they ask the same questions. But people have been getting really personal with the questions that they've been asking. And I, I really honestly expected some harder questions. But thank you guys for taking it light on me. I really no, <laughs> no problem. We appreciate you. Folks, we want to know where your man at. Maybe I ain't got one. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get married in my 30s now. I'm a catch. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you got it for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap really, things up. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm cut you off. Thank you. I really do appreciate you guys. I'm glad we were able to do this. This is, this is great. I'm so happy for what you guys are doing, giving people the platform to be able to speak to others, to be able to inspire people, to be able to motivate. You know, it takes a lot of heart to be able to be on a platform where you're trying to grow yourself, but you want to bring other people in so that everybody has the opportunity to grow at the same time. So I commend you guys. I thank you guys um, for bringing me on. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys tune into our interview. That'll be at eight o'clock. We'll be right back on here with Hill Holidays. Thank y'all. Of course. And if you save this vid video, send it to me, okay? Or, or if you share it or however, let me know how I can share the uh, video in its entirety. Absolutely. All right, baby. Have a good night. Thank you, too. Peace, you guys. Bye -bye.